at the far western edge of Europe, where the Atlantic pounds ancient cliffs and mist curls over green hills, lies a land with a secret. It looks quiet from a distance, almost forgotten. But beneath its forests and granite valleys hides one of the most surprising genetic stories in all of Europe. Here, Ice Age survivors, Mediterranean farmers, steppe warriors, Celtic tribes, Romans, Germanic rulers, and even a mysterious North African wave all left their mark. Galicia isn't the edge of Europe. It's where some of its oldest worlds collide. More than 40,000 years ago, long before cities, metal, or writing, small human groups were already living in the north of Iberia. During the coldest phase of the Ice Age, around 20,000 years before Christ, huge ice sheets covered most of Europe. Yet Galicia remained a safe haven. It became part of the Franco-Cantabrian refuge, one of the few places where humans survived the extreme climate. Their maternal DNA lines, especially HV0 and U5, these mark mother-to-child inheritance, are still among the most common in Galicia today. These early hunter-gatherers likely had darker skin and strong facial features, but many carried the genetic change that lightens eye color. That means blue or green eyes already appeared here in the Ice Age, appeared here in the Ice Age. They lived as coastal foragers, artists, and explorers. They left behind cave paintings, shell mounds, and traces of an Atlantic way of life that would last for thousands of years. Around 5,500 BC, farming groups from Anatolia reached Iberia by sea. They brought wheat, animals, pottery, and completely new ways of living. But they did not replace the earlier hunter-gatherers. Instead, they mixed with them. These first farmers were generally lighter-skinned and shorter. Their maternal DNA passed down through mothers, often belonged to lineages such as K, J, and T2. Their paternal DNA inherited from fathers included G2A, a marker strongly linked to the early farming expansion. Together, the local hunter-gatherers and the new settlers created a blended population. Farming took root across Galicia. Large stone monuments appeared, and the region settled into a stable mix. Older Ice Age ancestry carried mainly through the maternal line, and Near Eastern ancestry from the first farmers carried through both parents but an even greater change was still ahead. Between 2500 and 2000 BC, a new population entered the region. They were linked to the Bell Beaker world, a culture named after its distinctive bell-shaped drinking cups. They were also part of the large migrations that expanded from the Pontic Caspian steppe. These groups brought new metals, new social ideas, and a genetic profile that dramatically reshaped Iberia. The biggest change appeared in the paternal line, passed from fathers to sons. R1BM269 arrived and quickly replaced almost all earlier male lineages. By the end of the Bronze Age, most men in Galicia carried R1BP312. Soon after, its uniquely Iberian branch, R1BDF27, rose to dominance. This branch almost certainly formed inside Iberia between about 2200 and 1800 BC, long before the Iron Age and long before Celtic languages appeared. These Bronze Age newcomers were typically taller, had lighter skin, and often had light eyes, traits linked to steppe ancestry. Their arrival reshaped the region and set the stage for the Celtic societies that would soon emerge across the Atlantic world.
By the Iron Age, around 900 BC, Galicia had become a distinct Atlantic Celtic society. Its hills were covered with castros, stone hill forts built between 900 BC and AD 1. Inside them were round houses, workshops, and shared spaces that shaped everyday life. Archaeology reveals a warrior tradition, ironworking and swirling geometric art similar to Ireland and Brittany. Yet genetics shows something crucial. This did not come from the classic Celtic migrations of Central Europe, such as the Hallstatt and Latin cultures. Galicia remained dominated by the paternal lineage R1BDF27, which had already risen during the Bronze Age. This means Celtic culture here developed locally through Atlantic networks, not through population replacement from abroad. Iron Age Galicians likely looked similar to many Galicians today. Fair to intermediate skin, mostly brown hair, and a higher chance of blue or green eyes. These traits reflect the steppe ancestry that remained strongest in the Northwest. Their language, Galician, recorded from about 150 BC to AD 100, was closely related to the Celtic languages of the British Isles. Today, echoes of that era still survive. The Gaita bagpipes, the spirals carved into ancient stones, and the fast rhythm of the Muinera dance. They are living reminders of a Celtic civilization born on Iberian soil and carried forward by the people of this land. When Rome arrived around 137 BC, Galicia did not collapse, it adapted. The Romans brought roads, engineering, city planning, and the Latin language. Over time, Latin evolved into what became Galician Portuguese. But genetically, their impact was small. Only a limited amount of ancestry from Italy and the Eastern Mediterranean entered the region. Galicia remained, above all, an Atlantic population. The Swabi ruled Galicia from AD 409 to 585. Their cultural influence was greater than their genetic one. They formed the first stable Germanic kingdom in Iberia, yet added only a small share of new paternal lines inherited through fathers. Their legacy survives more in law codes, place names, and early Christian structures than in DNA. Modern whole genome research has uncovered one of the most unexpected stories in Galician history. A meaningful North African and Middle Eastern genetic layer between 13 and 16 percent entered Galicia before the Islamic conquest, not after it. Genetic dating places this mixture between AD 620 and 670 during the last decades of the Visigothic Kingdom. The arrival was strongly male-driven. About 21% of Galician Y-DNA, inherited through fathers, traces back to North African or Middle Eastern origins. In contrast, the maternal lines, passed from mothers, stayed close to 1%. These men may have arrived through military movements, trade routes, or early maritime contacts. They left few cultural traces, yet their genetic signature became a permanent layer in Galicia's ancestry. Today, Galicia stands genetically apart from much of Spain. Galicians cluster closest to Basques, Asturians, and the Atlantic French. Their steppe ancestry is higher than in most Iberian regions. Their DF27 paternal lineage, inherited through fathers, reaches some of the highest frequencies in Europe. 
and while they do carry North African ancestry, it is lower than in Andalusia. In appearance, many modern Galicians show fair or intermediate skin, brown hair with lighter tones, and a higher chance of blue or green eyes. Culturally, Galicia keeps its Atlantic character through its music, architecture, seafaring traditions, and distinct language. Galicia's past is not a straight line. It is a story built in layers. Layers from the Ice Age refugees, from Neolithic farmers, from Bronze Age upheavals, from Atlantic Celtic culture, from Roman and Swabian rule, and from early medieval arrivals out of North Africa. Each layer remains visible, none fully erased, all woven into one of the richest genetic landscapes in Europe. Galicia is not the edge of Europe. It is one of its oldest hearts. If you want more journeys like this, stories that connect genetics, history, and the hidden roots of our world, make sure you subscribe. Leave a comment, share your thoughts, and tell me which region or people you'd like to explore next. Every like, every share, Every subscription helps this channel bring more of these deep stories to life. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next chapter.